Christmas is for the whole family, including our pets. So each year we fill their stocking and trim the tree with ornaments that include them. Unfortunately, some of our fur buddies are getting up there in age and this year we wanted to go one step further and immortalize their imprint on our lives with a classic Christmas DIY, homemade custom ornaments. These are great for baby's first Christmas, pet paws, or simply making art and memories as a family. And I really hope when you watch this video, you are inspired to take a piece of this home with you. All it takes is two cups of flour, one cup of salt, one cup of water, rolled to 1 8 inch thick, baked at 250 degrees Fahrenheit for approximately two hours. And of course, you're going to need some cookie cutters as well. The most important thing to remember is to put a little hole at the top of each of your cutouts so that you can hang up your ornaments after they're baked. And you can do this with a straw or the wide end of a chopstick Okay, so maybe Rich was making a pie all along, but we did roll and bake some salt dough cookies as well, and now it's time to decorate them. We made sure to get prints from all five of our pets. Even if you do not have pets, you can still DIY your own homemade custom ornaments. I'll also help you pick out the right paint for the job since I tested three different brands of acrylic paint on this batch, and I have feedback for each one. My blue, my red, my yellow, and my green are Daler Ronnie acrylics. My silver and two browns are coming from a brand called Army Painter or Paints, which you can find in game stores near the mini figurines. And both the black and white paints are Golden Heavy Body Acrylics, which I purchased for my art classes in college, which also makes them some of the few traditional art supplies that I have used because my grade depended on me pushing past my fears of imperfections. Today is another day to kick imposter syndrome in the tush, acknowledge that we're all artists no matter the outcome as long as we're making art, and this is a really fun way to do it. For the snowman ornament, he got the star treatment in the golden heavy body acrylic, white for his snowy body, and black for his top hat. These went on incredibly clean and easy. I had no qualms or struggles with this paint and will end up using it again on some of the other cutouts as well. Speaking of, we will bounce around from shape to shape to let each layer of color of paint dry while working on another one. For this Christmas tree, I used the Daler Brawny Acrylic Green that I've had literally most of my life and stubbornly refused to throw away, so we're going to see how well they have aged. I can say first and foremost that these are very textured going onto the ornaments. They really did need to be laid on thick so it may look a little bit gloopy and uh, that seemed entirely necessary which you will see in a moment because anytime I spread the paint too thin it would end up picking up pieces of itself in little flakes almost like using tape and so I would have to scoop up a little bit more paint and dab that right back in. However, I am not upset at all about this because I am painting a pine tree and the texture really does lend itself well to this ornament in particular. So it was really a blessing in disguise and I still really like how it worked out. Probably my favorite of the paints I used on this project ended up being the Army Painter War Paints, which I'm using on the Gingerbread Man for his base cookie color. These also went on incredibly clean and easy, but were even less streaky than the white on the snowman. But if you are seeing streakiness on your ornaments, it's nothing a second coat of paint can't fix. I do end up trimming my Gingerbread Man in the same white from the Golden Heavy Body Acrylics so that it looks like an iced cookie and the struggles I had with it at first were entirely due to the round brush that I was using and as soon as I swapped brushes to one with a more angular edge, the finer details were much easier to paint on. So if you haven't already stocked your acrylic paint, those are just some things I discovered about these three brands that may be useful to you the next time you're in the market for paint. 
let's pick up the pace here a smidge because the fun part has really just begun. Customizing your cookie cutout ornaments really comes down to the details and how you decorate your ornament. Where I gave the gingerbread man a layer of icing, someone else might paint on a few layers of clothing or even cut out and glue on some cardstock with various different patterns for clothing. Maybe instead of painting on the eyes, they would use googly eyes and glue those on. There are infinite possibilities, which really does make this whole process unique to each person every time they make one of these ornaments. For the record, this was my first time. And I know based on the texture of my more colorful paints, I'm going to need to think a little outside the box and get creative too when it comes to decorating my Christmas tree ornament and topping off the other two icons. While it may be enough to paint in the brown stump of the tree with this paint and the yellow star at the top of the tree, I don't know that I'm going to be able to get enough controlled detail work with the paints themselves for the bobbles and the trim on the tree, especially after filling in the paw prints for my cats with the red and purple paint and realizing a lot of the depth is lost to the thicker paint and the potential for detail very slim. And that's why I whipped out my handy dandy glue gun and plugged it in up here next to the nutcracker. With a little hot glue, this string of beads turned into the perfect set of buttons for our gingerbread and snowman and baubles for our Christmas tree. With as much care as I could manage, I filled in the final cat paw with the blue paint, but I definitely wouldn't be able to use these vibrant colors on the smaller pet prints, so the tortoise will be painted with that light cookie dough brown color, and the chinchilla prints will get filled in with the silver war paint, which you will see, I promise. We just have a few more things left to cover. While we glue on some of these accessories, let me introduce you to my darling Elliot, the Redfoot Tortoise, who we recently took camping in Italy Wild. I found this really colorful green and red lanyard in my sewing box that would make just the perfect garland for our tree ornaments, so I cut a few strips to length for the tree and glued them on using the hot glue gun again. To keep the ends from fraying, I hot glued them to the side of the salt dough ornaments and pressed the strands together into the glue. After repeating that a few times, I had a tr Christmas tree fully wrapped in garland. Let me introduce you to Lucy, our lovely little lady who's been a part of our family for years. Not, not the number four, but for F-O-R years. Each of these pet print ornaments are going to get labeled with names using paint pens. I have a couple different colors, so I'm gonna try to use a little variety. And this was probably the best one, an oil-based metallic gold Sharpie paint pen that I used on both shrimp and troopers paw print ornaments. One of the ways I tried to keep the names as centered as possible was to start by writing the middle letters and working my way outwards in both directions. And then for the snowman, I thought he was still looking a little bit bare, so I used a metallic silver paint pen to give him a scarf. And once that dried, I went ahead and outlined this using a black brush pen. And that turned out really well, I think, in my personal opinion. I liked the idea of going back through and just outlining some of the solid fill colors a little bit. And I had a lot more control using the brush pen as well. Before I can show you the beauty shots of these ornaments on the tree, we first have to string them up. Some of my ornaments have a centered hole while others have two, like Lucy's for example, and I'll show you how to string them both. For a single hole, after you thread your yarn, ribbon, or twine through the hole, pull up the ends so they're equal length, then tie an overhand knot the way you'd tie your shoes. This will help with keeping the ornament facing the right way when you hang it on the branches. The next knot you make will be a surgeon's knot at the end of your rope, which I'm doing now. I'm struggling a little bit with this just because the ribbon doesn't want to go with the yarn, but once you pull both of those through and pull the knot tightly, then you can clip off the excess at the top with a pair of scissors. 
Now it will face forward when you hang it. For a double hole ornament, you'll want to tie it just once after threading, like tying your shoe. You can even add a bow like I have done here. I really hope this video has inspired you because now it is time to see how good they look on the tree.